Before we start our lesson for today, I am inviting you to join us in a magical learning experience at home. Enroll now at Vibal's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! Would you believe that earthquakes occur every day somewhere around the world? Yes! Even here and now! Hi everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Scientific Friday! I am Teacher Janelle and I'm here to guide you in your journey of understanding the wonders of science. Are you ready to join me for today's lesson? Come on! Back when we used to meet face-to-face -face in school, we have been doing duck, cover, and hold during drills. But why do we have to do these drills? Today, we are going to learn about earthquakes. In this topic, we will explore and answer the following questions. What is an earthquake and why does it occur? How do we record, measure, and tell where an earthquake occurred? And why is it significant to learn about earthquakes? Are you ready to learn? Let's go! What is an earthquake? An earthquake is a natural phenomena that happens when two blocks of the earth on the surface called fault plane slip past each other. The earthquake starts below the earth's surface and this location is called the hypocenter. The location directly above the hypocenter which is on the actual surface of the earth is called the epicenter. There are two types of earthquakes. The first is tectonic earthquake, which are produced by the sudden movements along the fault plains and tectonic boundaries. And the second is volcanic earthquake, which is caused by the rising lava or magma beneath the active volcanoes. Can you try to enumerate at least 6 out of the 22 active volcanoes here in the Philippines? Great! Mayon Volcano Taal Volcano Mount San Laon Mount Pinatubo Mount Hibok Hibok and Mount Bulusan Earthquakes may have three stages Foreshock, Main Shock, and Aftershock Foreshocks are a series of small earthquakes that occur in the same place prior to the main shock. Scientists will not be able to determine if it is a foreshock until the main shock occurs. Main shocks are the strongest quake that can occur, and it is always followed by aftershocks, which are also a series of small earthquakes that occur on the same place of the main shock. It can continue for days, weeks, months, and even years. Why do earthquakes occur? Earth has three layers, crust, mantle, and core. Crust and uppermost mantle form the Earth's lithosphere, a rigid and cool layer that is broken into sections called the tectonic plate. These plates lie on top of the asthenosphere, a semi-fluid layer below the crust and the uppermost mantle. It consists of molten rocks that move slowly and continuously that causes the plate on top of it to move as well. The reason why earthquakes occur is because energy is released when the plates move and break tensions on huge rocks deep within the earth. Most of the time, we do not feel them. But the truth is, more than 15 earthquakes occur every day just in the Philippines. How do scientists measure, record, and locate earthquakes? Earthquakes release an energy called seismic waves that are measured through an instrument called seismograph. 
The recording made using this instrument is called a seismogram. Now, a seismograph is placed on the surface of the Earth, where it detects and records seismic waves in a series of zigzag lines, in which scientists are able to determine the time, distance from the epicenter, and the magnitude of the earthquake. Scientists can determine the distance of where the earthquake occurred, but they cannot pinpoint the exact location of the epicenter. Thus, they use method triangulation, where they determine three seismograph stations nearest the actual earthquake. Circles or radius are drawn on a map, and the intersection of those three circles is the epicenter. Although there is an instrument to record, measure, and locate earthquakes, do you think scientists can predict an earthquake? The answer is no. Scientists know that earthquakes may occur on fault planes based on their observations on the previous occurrences, but they cannot tell the exact date and time when it will happen. Take for example the news before that there is an expected magnitude 8 earthquake that might occur in the country. Thus, local governments have already been preparing disaster protocols since 2015. In our country, we have a government agency called the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX under the Department of Science and Technology. It acts as the main authority in mitigating disasters caused by volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunamis, and other geological phenomena. FIVOX measures the strength of earthquake occurrences in the country in two ways. First is magnitude, which is proportional to the energy released by an earthquake at the focus recorded and calculated by the seismogram. It is represented in Arabic numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5. You might hear the news magnitude 5 intensity 2. Second is the intensity. This is the measure of the strength of an earthquake felt by people in a certain area. It is represented in Roman numerals and measured by FIVOX using the Earthquake Intensity Scale. Its rating is relative to the effects on people, objects, environment, and structures in the surroundings. Meaning, if the surrounding is near the epicenter, the intensity rating felt by people is higher. If the surrounding is farther, the intensity rating is lower. Thus, even though the magnitude is strong, the intensity differs from one place to another depending on how it was felt. Are you still confused with their difference? Let's try this example. A magnitude 5 earthquake occurred and its epicenter is in Lipa, Batangas. Would you feel an intensity 4 in Manila? The answer is no. The farther you are from the epicenter, the lesser the effects you feel. It may be an intensity 2 in Manila, wherein very few people would feel it. Why is it important to learn about earthquakes? Learning about earthquakes makes us aware that earthquakes occur all the time and anytime. We also put emphasis on the following. Disaster preparedness protocols such as drills and information about evacuation areas are important. And good urban planning should be implemented to avoid establishment of commercial and residential areas near fault lines. Do you think we can prevent earthquakes? The answer is no. We can only prepare on what to do before during and after the earthquake in case the big one or magnitude 8 earthquake occurs in the country. Before we end our lesson for today, I am inviting all of you to join us in a magical learning experience at home. 
Enroll now at Vival's Happy Homeschool Program. You can find the details at the description part of this video. Hope to see you there! I hope you learned a lot today and apply these learnings in your daily lives. Join me again for our next Scientific Friday and together, let us discover things around us. Because science is everywhere! This has been Teacher Janelle for Teacher Vival. Goodbye, everyone! Thank you.